My journey from bare feet to high heels has been interesting because I was the little pitiful first grader, tomboy. My mom and daddy put me in a C-section and that is not a procedure to have a child, believe me. So I was in the C-section and I always wore the same thing. I love my, my corduroy pants and my flannel shirt. And I had a real short haircut and lost my teeth and had great big lips. And mama said, honey, you grow into them. I said, Lord, did you hear that? Hurry up. And I, it was just a challenge for me. And one day, a high school girl came and said, y'all dress up tomorrow. We're going to pick out the cutest little girls in the class to be in the Little Miss Merry Christmas. Well, that had my name all over it in my mind. So I did, I dressed up, you know, same thing, just shined up my shoes. And when those girls came in, I just stepped right up and grinned my heart out. Big lips, no teeth, tomboy. And I remember the girl going, bless her heart, God love her. And they kept looking at this girl next to me, looking at this girl next to me. And I finally looked, of course, y'all know her. It was Deborah Drotty. You know her. Everybody's got one. Little Miss Perfect. Her mama put her Easter dress on her, a little stick-out dress. <laughs> she walked around all day like she was an airplane. <laughs> the Avon lady gave her a test or two, but red lipstick, she was ruby redded up. Had her teeth. Her mama put pink spongy rollers in her hair the night before. And as we say in the South, her hair was jacked up to Jesus. <laughs> she had her poodle socks and her patent leather shoes. I was a tomboy. I could have taken that girl down. <laughs> One hit. Of course she got picked. Competition. Everybody should get a Deborah Drotty. She'd make you better. Look for one. Find one. Well, little old me goes up to the high school girl on the bus and says, I can play the harmonica. She said, you can. I said, yes. She said, well, you can be in our pageant. I said, uh-huh. And I sat down on that school bus, and a tidal wave hit me a panic. I don't play the harmonica. <laughs> but I had some. My brother came home from high school. He was helping. He said, we need a fish bowl. <laughs> oh, I had that. It had two fish in it, little goldfish. But did you know that goldfish have the shortest attention span of any creature on the face of this earth. So by the time they were going down the toilet like that, I don't think they figured it out, you know, it just didn't matter. <laughs> Honey, I cleaned up that fishbowl, gave it to my brother, and I remember that night, those girls in those great big beehive dudes and those port soir shoes that matched their dresses, chiffon swishy dresses, long white gloves, stuck their hand in my fishbowl. I was sitting on the front row in a broken chair. I mean, I fell out of that chair so many times, I did not care. I remember that was like yesterday. It was magic. And it's like, I heard in the back of my head, you're going to do this one day. I said, you have got to be kidding. I am stupid. I have no teeth. And my daddy is a farmer. And we live off cabbage and tomatoes when we have a good crop. We live in a tenant house. There are five of us in one bathroom. My daddy didn't finish school. He dropped out in the 10th grade. My mama calls herself. I've graduated from Dyckle University. We have no money. I saw what I think of. But do you know God is good? Because 17 years and five months later, I was walking across stage of Miss America as Miss South Carolina. And that dream just poured into me right then. Just poured into me. And let me tell you something. Sixth grade? Teacher hands me a stack of paper and say, take this to the office, but don't look. It's your IQ. <laughs> I thought, she's stupid. <laughs> so I looked and I thought, no, I am stupid. <laughs> it was horrible. And then 
In high school, I got a job teaching dyslexic children, and I thought, bless their hearts, I will help them. Second day there, I got fired. They told me I was dyslexic. <laughs> so I wanted to take, go to college, first person in the family. So I took my, SA, my PSAT, made the lowest score in the class, then the SAT, lowest score in the class. I mean, you're supposed to go up and went down. Took it again, went further down. I mean, I was going this way. ACT, I mean, it was pitiful. I wanted to go to Clemson. Okay, I know y'all killed us in football. We deserved it. But I wanted to go to Clemson, and I sent my scores in, and I called them. I was so excited. I said, y'all get my scores? They said, yeah, we did, but we have a problem because they apparently, from the score, one is missing. I said, what's the score? And they told me. I said, no, that's added up. And they said, you aren't college material, sugar. Oh, no, don't tell me that. I, don't, I just don't receive that. So you know what? There was one school in Columbia, South Carolina that gave me an ink. You know, ink like that. So I drove there, and I wore that man down to a nub. And he let me on academic probation. I was so excited. And I remember going back to my daddy in that tomato field. I was jumping over tomato steaks. He said, Jane, I can't send you. I have a terrible crop. I said, plant some cabbage, Jane. And you know what? I went to Columbia College on academic probation on cucumber rebate money <laughs> and a grant. And I graduated, and I was on the Deaton's list and went to graduate school. <laughs> that is good.